Okay, so just try to, like, I'm not allowed to use this part of the board. <laughs> so just remind me. I will work around Drake. <laughs> okay, this is going to be short, and then we're going to do a bunch of uh, questions afterwards. Uh, so three pages here. So now we just need to talk about inverse trig. I know how much you guys love trig. So just recall, uh, recall the following notation. Now, you guys are probably used to um, writing sine inverse as sine with a negative one, yeah? I don't like that notation too much. So I write it like this. So just note that uh, sine inverse, what you're used to writing, I actually write like this, arc sine. Well, I just, why, do, why, I like this better. It's, it's more clear. Right, believe me, when we start mixing these things, it's, it's, you're going to prefer to have arc sine there. Because you'll see things like sine of arc sine, and immediately you'll be able to pull it out. It means the inverse of sine. That means the inverse of sine, right? So I'll write them all. So arc sine of uh, sine of theta is theta. Arc cos of cos of theta is theta. And arc tan of tan of theta is theta. Now, can anyone guess what my next question is going to be? What have we been doing all of this time? Developing rules for what? Derivatives. Do we have a rule for anything? Well, do we have rules to take derivatives of sine functions and cos functions and tans? Do we have a rules for their inversion? No. Can we get rules for their inverses? Yeah. Yes, right? Because I just taught you how to get inverses of functions. OK, so let's try to figure out then what is the derivative of arc sine of x. Does anyone know what it is from memory? Hmm? Well, it doesn't matter. We'll work it out. So proof. Anyone have any good starting points? So how, what did I tell like, So this is the inverse function, right? So what do I want? I want the derivative of the inverse function at x. So what is the rule for this that I just taught you? 1 over what? Well, it's the derivative of the function of the fu of not the inverse function. OK. If f inverse in this case is arc sine, then f is sine. Okay. So what we're going to get down here is the derivative of sine uh, x of theta prime times, or times, composite the uh, inverse function itself. So arc sine theta. Again, this is just 1 over f prime f inverse x. That's the rule for taking derivatives of inverses. OK, what is the derivative of sine theta? Cos of theta. So we get uh, 1 over cos of theta, and then I put this in. So you get cos of arc sine of theta. Any ideas now? Oh, why did I? Sorry, guys. I know you hate when I do this. Yeah. Why did I put theta? You should all be x's. Isn't that just the inverse of tan cos times arc sine? Hmm? Isn't cos times arc sine the inverse of It's not cos, it's of. Cos of arc sine. Oh, of x. Jesus Christ. Cos of arc sine of x. OK. You are all fooled by this on Weeby work. How do I resolve this? We're not taking a derivative. I just need to simplify this now. OK, so triangles, right? Because uh, I can't use this because of triangles. All right. When I take arc sine of x, what do I get? What is the arc, what is the inverse functions, trig functions giving us back? 
Okay, so the forward one, I give an angle and get a number between negative one and one. The backwards, I give a number between negative one and one and I get back an angle, right? So you're gonna get an angle when you take arc sine of x. Call it theta. This angle is going to be on a triangle. Yeah? Arc sine of x is really like arc sine of x over 1. OK, so if this is the angle on this triangle, what are the corners? Or the edges, the sides? The opposite is x. Opposite is x. Hypotenuse, Hypotenuse is 1. OK, this squared plus this squared has to equal this squared. Yeah. So x squared plus what squared? 1 minus x squared. x squared plus that squared gives you 1. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Can you confirm that these are the right sides of the triangle? If, you take, if I ask you what sine of theta is, do you get x over 1? OK. So if this is theta, then what is cos of theta? Yeah, these aren't trick questions. Like, what, what is cos of theta on a triangle, right? It's, it's the uh, opposite over adjacent. Oh, no, no, no. It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, OK. So this is uh, root 1 minus x squared over 1. Hold on a second. But this theta was arc sine x. So cos of theta, or cos of arc sine of x, is 1 minus x squared square root. The thing that uh, is hard to understand, perhaps, these are all the same triangle. Remember, cos and sine and all of these things are helping us understand and codify uh, relationships among sides. So you, you would not be able to work this out uh, Algebraically, a lot of you are trying on your uh, Weeby work. All you have to remember is that this is the same triangle. Right? So you work it out like that. OK, so given that, we can give a rule now for this. This is going to be 1 over 1 minus x squared. So the rule, the derivative of arc sine is 1 over root 1 minus x squared. Okay? This is crucial that you understand this. Right? This is something very simple that seems to get lost somehow. Right? That when we do trig, it's all the same triangle. So you can pull out arbitrary uh, ratios if you want. We're going to do it again. Let's try to get a rule now for the derivative with respect to x of arctangent of x. Where should we start here? Well, this is an inverse function. So what does the rule tell me that I get? d by dx of arctan of x is 1 over what? Apply the rule. Well, we're, I gave you a rule for finding inverses. So what do we need? We need f and f inverse. What's f inverse in this case? Nope. f inverse. I want to get a rule for this. I know arctan is the inverse of tan. Right? So in this case, we're letting f inverse be tan. Ah, oh, sorry, arctan of x, and, we're, and f then has to be tan x. Does this make sense? Right? Yeah. I've given you a rule for finding in, uh, derivatives of inverse functions. This is an inverse function. It's the inverse function of tan. The rule is always derivative of uh, f inverse of x is 1 over f prime of x composite that. I'm just applying this rule over and over. And I haven't done anything this class, but, but apply this rule. Well, the other thing I did was show you why it's a rule. So given that, 
What goes down here? Or at least tell me what's confusing. Yeah. The derivative of tan uh, x composite arc tan. I just did that. That's all I did. Right. F prime composite f inverse. I've been doing this again and again and again and again. This is the only thing that you have to remember from today. Well, inverse functions are in, they in, they're inverses of one another, yeah. right? But I want, I have a rule for finding inverses. So I have to let arc 10 be the inverse, right, in this case. Okay, so we have this. You are correct to say that this was equal to uh, 1 over, this is secant squared, I believe you said, which is correct. So secant squared arc 10 goes in. You got secant squared arc 10 x. OK, show me how good you are at trig. How do I simplify this? We have a bunch of identities. Do any of them include secant squared? Does Pythagoras theorem ring a bell? So what Pythagoras theorem do we have that it involves secant squared? Pardon me? Exactly. You, we know that tan squared x plus 1 is equal to secant squared x. Yeah? Recognize it? So what does that mean that I can replace this with? Right? Just abstract this. This is like theta. I should be able to replace this with 1 over uh, 1 plus tan squared arc tan x. Does that make sense? I just, I just applied this uh, rule, but x in this case was like arc tan x. OK, so given that this thing down here is tan of arc tan of x squared, what does that simplify to? Well, tan and arc tan are inverse functions. So arc tan of tan, has, arc tan, of, tan of x has to be x. That's what defines an inverse function. So what is tan of its inverse at x? x squared squared. So you get 1 over 1 plus x squared, which is what the derivative of this is. OK, so I've given, it, I've given you a rule for arc sine arc tan. All right, so maybe, uh, well, let's just do one example, and then I'm going to give you your exercise. So what is the derivative of uh, arc sine t squared? Well, I'm just going to apply the rule. That's 1 over 1 minus x squared squared. That's all to the half. And then I have to multiply by chain rule. Oh, I'm really off my game today. I have to multiply by chain rule, which is the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Right, so here's the new rule I gave you. Here's the rule from yesterday, chain rule. So that shouldn't be too bad. I'm just going to erase this and give you some exercises now. And please stay and try. Because we got to do a little bit of workout. OK, so. This is for you guys, exercises. Find the rule for cos x, or sorry, arc cos x. Find y prime given y is this. Sine 1 over root 2. Uh, 
arc secant x squared, arc cotangent root t minus 1, d ln of arc tan of x. Now feel free to look up the rules for taking arc tangent, arc coat, and stuff like that. You don't have to work them out. You can look it up now, right? because I, I rely that you'd be able to do it uh, if needed. Right? So most textbooks have like a cheat sheet page at the back, which just lists all of these special trig functions uh, and their derivatives. So check that out. I also want you to do some investigation on your own. I was supposed to talk a little bit more about trig functions today, but I don't really like trig. So I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, I want you to just go and investigate uh, the limit as, as x goes to infinity and the limit of x goes to minus infinity of the following functions, right? So this uh, for f is equal to uh, arc sine, arc cos, and like arc cot, like all of them. Investigate all of the inverse functions and see what their behavior is. We'll see if they have horizontal asymptotes. Investigate their geometry. You need to be able to identify their range and domain specifically. <laughs> because if you invert any of these sines, coses, or tans, you don't get a function in the end. Yes? OK, so you know how the rule is 1 over uh, f prime composed then f the inverse? Yes. OK, so we start with arc tan x. Why wouldn't the inverse be tan of x? That, it, that is true. Okay, so why do but what is the thing we're trying to find the derivative of? I'm not trying to find a rule for tan of x. I already know how to take the derivative of tan of x. I want to find a rule for taking the derivative of arc tan. So thereby, arc tan has to be the thing that is the inverse, not the regular function. What you, your, your suggestion will work, but you'll end up deriving uh, information about tan of x, which we have. Yeah. But it is true, like f inverse inverse is f. Right, these things are inverses of one, of one another. But remember, I have a rule for finding inverses. So if I want to, I need to make that thing the thing that's the inverse. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop this then. Okay, so stay and work for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. <laughs>